Governments are pushing for the internal combustion engine ban across the globe between 2030 and 2035. Car makers are preparing for the inevitable, but some major car makers are pushing back. Some say the ban is premature and that it'll cause catastrophic social impact. Even when it comes to the U.S., not all states share the same goals when it comes to banning gas power vehicles either. Today, we're looking at how car makers across the globe are reacting to the ban and what this means for you. The U.S. wants half of all new vehicles sold to be zero emissions by 2030. And on top of that, we're aiming for a network of at least 500,000 chargers. But some states, like New York and California, have even bigger and loftier goals. And not everyone's a fan. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Light-duty vehicles acquired by the government will need to be emission-free by 2027. And that's no small plan, especially considering that the government buys around 50,000 vehicles each year. Then we got Canada. In Canada, it will also be illegal to sell new gas-powered vehicles in 2035. After 2035, the only new vehicles you'll see zooming out of dealerships and onto Canadian roads will be electric ones. Canada also plans to spend $497 million through 2027 to build out their charging network. Then, look at our neighbor across the pond, the UK. They're banning the sale of all new gas-powered vehicles even sooner. 2030! It's only seven years away. All new cars and vans will need to be 100% zero emission by 2035. And on top of all that, just this past March, the UK UK pledged 1.8 million to build a nationwide network of over 300,000 charging stations. Or look at the European Union. We're talking about 27 countries here. The EU agreed to ban sales of new gas and diesel cars starting in 2035. Then there's China. China's goal is to have EVs make up 40% of all cars sold by 2030. And they want it to be completely carbon neutral as a country by 2060. That means there won't be a single ounce of carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere, at least not from vehicles. But here's the thing. The government of China has actually been encouraging consumers to take the EV route since 2009. It even started offering generous EV subsidies to encourage EV adoption across the country. But the price difference in the number of buyers turned out to be large. So these subsidies became very costly for the government. So it phased it out. Last but not least, we got Japan. The ice ban target is also 2035. But it also supports hybrid vehicles. Interestingly, Japan isn't following suit in requiring car makers to meet a zero emissions threshold. In fact, back in June, Japan actually pushed to remove a 50% zero emission vehicle target from a G7 statement. Let's talk about California. Depending on which camp you're on, you could say California is either progressive or aggressive or both compared to the nation as a whole when it comes to this topic. It wants 100%, not just half, of all new vehicles sold to be zero emissions by 2035. It all comes down to a decision by the California Air Resources Board, also known as the CARB. Back in August, they approved the Advanced Clean Cars 2 rule, which states that by 2035, 100% of new cars and light trucks sold in California must be zero emission vehicles. That that includes plug-in hybrids too. Of course, the move doesn't just come without its fair share of critics. Words like insulting, brash, and audacious are just some of the colorful adjectives critics are using to explain California's plan. Critics are also skeptical for another reason. California plans to have at least 35% of their vehicles be zero emission by 2026. That's nearly three years away. But this means that it will need to achieve on average double-digit EV sales growth every year between now and the end of 2026. The thing is, many automakers themselves aren't expecting such growth for EVs in the U.S. by the start of 2026. And only a few have said that a target of 30% zero emission vehicles would be optimistic by the year 2030. But this plan isn't anything new. It was just the next logical step in California's already ongoing path towards mass EV adoption. Even way back in 2019, Honda, Ford, Volkswagen, and BMW struck a voluntary agreement with California to reduce vehicle emissions. And then in 2020, Volvo joined the deal. California's legislature also approved a whopping $2.7 billion and $3.9 billion over three years to invest in zero emission vehicle adoption. These billions will also go towards clean mobility options for some of California's most environmentally and economically burdened communities. An example of one of its programs is it's supporting clean cars for all. The initiative provides up to $9,500 to low-income drivers who scrap their older vehicles and purchase a cleaner and greener one instead. Then there's a clean vehicle assistance program that provides low-income car buyers with special finance in the even up to five grand in down payment assistance. And then there's the Clean Vehicle Rebate Project that provides up to $7,000 for income qualified drivers to buy or lease a zero emissions vehicle. 
but that's far from the last of California's plans. They'll also be issuing 300 million bucks for more charging infrastructure. And I find that amusing because the British were only going to spend 1.8 million for their whole country for electric charging stations, which I find rather humorous. By 2030, the CARB expects 2.9 million less new gas-powered vehicles will be sold. And by 2035, that number is expected to go up to 9.5 million. They also expect greenhouse gas emissions from cars, pickups, and SUVs to be 50% lower. According to CARB, transportation is the single largest source of global warming emissions and air pollution in the entire state. So it expects the ice band to reduce 25% of smog-causing pollution from light-duty vehicles. And from 2026 to 2040, it expects climate climate warming pollution from ice vehicles to decrease by a cumulative total of 395 million metric tons. That's equal to avoiding the greenhouse gases produced from the combustion of 915 million barrels of petroleum. New York State is following suit. A few weeks ago, Governor Kathy Hochul directed the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation to propose and finalize rules for adopting a similar mandate to California's. Reason is because New York wants to be a national climate leader and an economic powerhouse. And so, New York plans to leverage its strengths to spur innovation and implement more zero emissions motor vehicles on a large scale. But banning combustion engine vehicles isn't all this mandate calls for. It all relates back to New York's long-term goal to reduce green House emissions by 85% by 2050. This isn't the first time New York has taken a step towards an all EV future. Last year, Hocho signed legislation that even called for new medium and heavy duty trucks to follow similar ice ban rules by 2045. For New York, these mandates all share one common goal to drive New York's transition to clean transportation forward. By the way, did you know that New York isn't the second state to set a ban on the sale of ice vehicles? Actually, it's the third. The second state to this ban was California's northern neighbor, the state of Washington. But not all car makers are in the same boat. Volvo, Bentley, Buick, and Cadillac committed to an ending gas-powered vehicle development by 2030. But Toyota, for example, is a very different outlook. Recently, Toyota CEO Akio Toyota said that it would be very difficult for Toyota to realistically reach California and New York State's specific targets. Toyota believes that the EV industry still requires more time to develop, refine, and produce what the mass media has been presenting. And so, Toyota says it will continue to offer the widest possible array of powertrains. If you're wondering just what this is, well, a few weeks ago, Toyota said 85% of the Toyotas here in the U.S. will still have tailpipes by 2030. That's nowhere near the 50% that many other car brands are targeting. Now, the 85% target is Toyota's strategy, and it plans to stick to it. The CEO said Toyota's a department store with all sorts of powertrains, and it's not right for a department store to dictate to customers which product you should buy. All that said, Toyota isn't standing still. It does have some innovative plans for its future vehicles. Its focus on the future is hydrogen fuel cells, and even hydrogen combustion as viable long-term options. Even so, environmentalists and shareholders are not fans of Toyota's reluctance in embracing the ice band. Believe it or not, Greenpeace even went so far as putting Toyota Toyota in last place in their ranking of global automakers' decarbonization efforts. Of course, Toyota doesn't agree. Akio Toyota says that Toyota is actually a top runner in reducing carbon emissions from vehicles worldwide because it's been investing in battery-powered hybrids for over two decades. Toyota also believes it'll be possible to produce eight 40-mile range plug-in hybrids for every 320-mile fully electric car. Toyota sees this as a strength, while critics see it as a weakness. Just consider Toyota's 25-year history with the Prius Hybrid. One critic in particular is the director of the Sierra Club's clean transportation for all campaign, Catherine Garcia. She claims that a Toyota hybrid today is not green technology because the Prius runs on the same pollution-emitting combustion engine found in any gas-powered car. Interestingly, last year, Toyota pledged to spend $28 billion in rolling out 30 EVs by 2030. If you're thinking that's a lot of dough, well, you're right, it is. But Toyota's pledge pales far in comparison to Ford's $50 billion pledge to build EVs through 2026. All the way back in 2019, Toyota was actually one of the automakers that joined the Trump administrative back attempt to challenge California's Clean Air Act exemption and regulation of vehicle emissions. But that's not all. Toyota stayed just up till the end as one of the last automakers to still push back against this act. It was only this past August that Toyota finally said it'll stop pushing and they recognized the state's emission authority. But Toyota isn't entirely alone. BMW also has its concerns about the ice ban. While the U.S. and many other countries have already set a concrete date for ending the sale of gas-powered vehicles, BMW is not. In the opinion of BMW CEO Oliver Zipsa, setting a concrete date to phase out gas-powered vehicles could remove more affordable cars from the market. If that were to happen, it would make owning a car out of reach for many prospective buyers. It can even be politically dangerous, too, if car ownership becomes a luxury only available just to the rich. BMW is completely wrong, in fact. 
statistics show that most Americans can't afford an EV. BMW sees no signs that the combustion engine will be obsolete on a global scale within the next 15 years. He would rather wait and see rather than prematurely set a date that puts low and middle income people at a huge disadvantage, at least for now. That said, when the time does come for the ICE ban to be enforced, BMW says it will be ready. By the end of this year, BMW expects more than double EV sales, and by 2030 it expects at least 50% of their sales to be zero emissions. Another critic of the ice ban is major automaker Stellantis, so much so that Stellantis CEO Carlos Tavares even calls for a renegotiation of the ice ban in the EU. He wants a provision that would allow hybrid cars as an intermediate step in the EU's goal for zero emission cars. He feels the ban was a dogmatic decision which will result in social consequences in the EU that just are not manageable. To Tavares, a complete ban on the sale of new ice vehicles will disable a big chunk of the population from being able to own a personal vehicle. This isn't a far cry from what BMW is saying. Look, EVs aren't cheap, so if you remove a cheaper ICE vehicle option off the market, consumers with less disposable cash just won't be able to buy a car. On the other hand, if the EU were to allow hybrids during the transition, then consumers can have this option while still reducing CO2 emissions by 50%. But Stellantis just doesn't want Europe to consider adding the hybrid route. In 2022, Stellantis met with representatives from the Mexican government to discuss the EV and hybrid market in that country, and they discussed Stellantis' investment plans in Mexico. Mexico's Minister of Finance and public credit, Rodrigo Ramirez de la O says that the Mexican government is guiding automotive companies to invest in Mexico's transformation, ensure sufficient energy supply, and provide a realistic and effective transition to clean energy. But now you tell me, do you think 2035 is too early to ban combustion engine cars? Are you in a position to even buy an EV? Please share by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.